40 Hadith and Exposition, 2nd Revised Edition, author Sayyid Ruhla Musawi Khomeini. 38th Hadith, The Meaning of God's Creation of Adam in His Image, Arabic Text, English Translation. With my chain of authorities reaching up to the August Sheikh, the Pillar of Islam, Muhammad ibn Yaqub al-Kulayni, from a group of our companions, from Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Khalid, from his father, from Abdullah ibn Bahar, from Abu Ayyub al-Khazaz, from Muhammad ibn Muslim, who said, I asked Abu Ja'far salam concerning that which is narrated, that God created Adam salam in his form, surah, literally form, image. He replied, It is a form that was originated and created. He elected it and chose it over all the other different forms and attributes and attributed it to himself in the same way that he has attributed the Kaaba and the spirit Ruh to himself, saying, My house, Surah 2, verse 125, Surah 22, verse 26, and I breathed into him of my spirit, Surah 15, verse 29, Surah 38, verse 72. Exposition. The tradition mentioned in the first part of this noble tradition was one which has been well known all along since the times of the Imams salam, to our own times, and it's been continually cited in the books of the Shia and the Ahl Sunnah. Hazrat Baqir salam, has confirmed the authenticity of its origin while explaining its meaning. However, there is a tradition reported by Sheikh Sadduq in Uyun Akbar Akhwada with his chain of authorities from the eighth of the Imams salam, whose meaning is as follows. Hussein ibn Khalid says, I said to Hadratullah salam, O son of the Messenger of God, the people narrate that the Messenger of God salam, said, God created Adam salam, in his own image. The Imam said, God damn them. They have omitted the first part of the tradition. The Messenger of God وسلم, passed by two men who were abusing each other. The Prophet heard one of them say to his companion, May God disfigure your face and of everyone who looks like you. Thereafter, the Messenger of God said, O servant of God, don't say that to your brother, for God Almighty and Glorious created Adam in his image. On this basis, Marhum Majlisi has ascribed the tradition of Imam Baqir salam to Taqiyah, dissemblance, and he has also suggested the probability that the statement of the Imam might be based on the presumption of acceptance of the authenticity or the apparent import of the tradition. Such a probability is very remote. That which is probable is that the tradition of Hazrat Rada salam refers to the first tradition where the meaning of Adam salam in the last part of the tradition, where it states, Inna Allaha khalaqa Adam ala suratihi. Verily, God created Adam in his image. Maybe that of the human species in the pronoun in ala suratihi refers to God the Exalted. In Hazrat Rida alayhi salam, considering that the narrator was incapable of understanding the meaning of the hadith, related the opening part of the tradition so that the person may imagine that Adam alayhi salam means the father of the human race with the pronoun in ala suratihi, referring to that man, so take note. And perhaps both the traditions are genuine in their origin and import. And the Messenger of God وسلم, might have stated the noble tradition without any previous background. And that is the tradition whose explanation is given by Hazrat Baqir salam, and on another occasion he might have made the statement with that background and, and Imam Rada salam, diverted the discussion to the other hadith with the background due to the incapacity of the narrator in understanding its meaning. And evidence that supports the suggestion is that in some traditions there occur the word ala suratihi ar rahman in the image of the all beneficent instead of ala suratihi, and this is not consistent with the tradition of the ayun. Moreover, even if it be assumed that this noble tradition is not authentic in its import, its meaning is implicit in the noble traditions as will be explained, God willing. Now we shall turn to explaining the meanings of the words of the noble tradition. As to the word Adam, the Siha states, originally it is with two Hamzas, for it pertains to the form of Al, and the second Hamza has been altered into an Alif. And when it is to be given a vowel sound, it is changed into wow, where after its plural is awadim. The reason that Adam salam, the father of the human race, Abu al-Bashar, was given this name is perhaps because he had a brown complexion, a smart alone, as according to the lexicons, al-adama min al-nas. 
Al-Nas means someone who is brownish, Al-Asmar. And according to some traditions, Adam salam was named so because he came from the Adam of the earth, Adam being in the sense of the face, and Adam al-Ard means the surface of the earth. As to the expression ala suratihi, surah in the lexicon is in the sense of picture and form, and it may be said that it has a general meaning common to different notions in which the commonality consists of the thingness of a thing and its actuality, filia. However, everything has an actuality in respect of which it is said to possess a form, dhu a surah, and that actuality is called form surah. The application of the term form in the terminology of the philosophers to matters that are inclusive of a thing's actuality and thingness is not contrary to its lexical meaning and is not a technical or special term. Sheikh Abu Asina, the chief of the Islamic philosophers, in the part on the metaphysics of his book Ashifa, says, At times, surah is applied to any configuration and act that is in a single or composite recipient, so that its movements and accidents are called surah form is also applied to something by virtue of which matter is sustained in actuality. Hence, the intellectual substances, jawahir, aqliya, and accidents cannot be called surah forms, and surah is applied to something by means of which matter becomes perfect, though it should not be sustained by it in actuality, such as health and that towards which a thing moves by its own nature, tab. Also, surah is applied to the species, no, genus, and differentia of a thing, or to all of them, and the universality of the universal in the particulars is also surah. Reflection on all the instances of the usage of surah shows that in all of them the criterion is actuality, and it is used univocally in all the cases of its use, to the extent that even God the Exalted is called surah the sur, the actuality of all actualities. As to the word istafa, safwa means something pure and purged from impurity, kudrat, and istafa has the sense of taking that which is clear and pure, safi, and is implied in its meaning. However, Jauhari and others have considered it to mean ikhtiyar, choosing, and so they have also considered ikhtiyar to mean istafa in the lexicons. This is, however, an explanation in terms of that which is implied as ikhtiyar also means taking that which is good, khair, and meritorious, and in this respect, coincides with istifa in external reality, though it is not synonymous with it. As to the word al-Kaaba, it is the name of the house of the god. Some have said that it has been called Kaaba due to its resemblance to a cube, muk'ab, or due to its square shape, and muk'ab in the terminology of mathematicians is a body with six equal planes perpendicular to one another. As to the word ruh in the terminology of men of traditional medicine, ruh spirit is described as a subtle vapor formed in an animal's heart due to the heat of the blood. They state that the heart has two sides. One of them is on the right, wherein the blood is drawn from the lever and there it releases a vapor due to the heart's heat. Those vapors flow through the left side of the heart, becoming refined there due to the actions of the heart, and from it the animal spirit is constituted. Then it flows through the blood vessels due to the expansion and contraction of the heart in the manner mentioned in the related works. Thus, the source of this animal spirit is the heart and its channels are the blood vessels. At times, the term spirit, ruh, is applied to the blood centered in the liver and its channels are the jugular veins and that is called the natural spirit, ruh at-tabi'i. So also in the terminology of the philosopher's spirit is often applied to the psychic spirit, ruh al-nafsani, which originates in the brain and its channels are the nerves and that is a manifestation and lower form of the immaterial spirit pertaining to the realm of divine command, amr, which is a divine mystery, Sir, as subhani and the spirit of God, Ruhullah, referred to in his words. وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ ruhi, And I breathed into him, that is, Adam alayhi salam, of my spirit. Hereafter, God willing, we will explain that the spirit is the one breathed by the divine breath, and that it is that which is the chosen and elect Mustafa wa Muhtar of the real, glorious, and exalted.
Adam alayhi salam is the complete manifestation of God and the greatest name of God. It should be known that the people of Gnosis Ma'rifa and the companions of the heart say that for each of the divine names there is a form Farah at the plane of Mahidiya, which is subject to the Tajalli revelation pertaining to the most sacred effusion al faid al-Aqdas at the plane of divine knowledge Hadrat al ilmiya by virtue of the divine self-love and seeking the keys of the hidden which no one knows except him. And that form is called the pre-existing essence, Aina Thabit, in the terminology of the people of God, Ahlullah. And with this tajalli, by virtue of the most sacred effusion, are realized first the ta'ayunat, determinations of the names, and by virtue of this very ta'ayun of the names, are realized the forms of the names, which are the essences, Ayan Afabita. The first name manifested with the tajalli of Ahadiyya and the most sacred effusion at the epistemic plane of Wahidiyya, Hadrat al ilmiya Yi Wahidiyya, and which becomes the mirror of the Ta'at tajalli is the greatest all-inclusive divine name, Ism al-Azam al-Jami'i al-Ilahi, and the station of the name of Allah which from the aspect of the hidden is the very tajalli through the most sacred effusion and in the tajalli of manifestation of perfect clarity and luminosity is the same as the all-inclusive station of Wahidiya from one viewpoint and the plurality of names from another viewpoint. The ta'ayun of the all-inclusive name and its form consists of the essence of the perfect man and the Muhammadan reality, Haqiqat al muhammadiyya as the sacred effusion is the manifestation of the objectifying tajalli of the most sacred effusion, and the station of divinity is the manifestation of the tajalli of the station of Wahidiya, and the greatest spirit, Ruh al Azam, is the manifestation of the tajalli of the ideal essence of the perfect man, and all other existence pertaining to the names, knowledge, and objective reality are the universal and particular manifestations of these realities and subtleties in accordance with an exquisite explanation explanation that cannot be contained in this brief discourse and whose details we have mentioned in the treatise Misbah al-Hidayah. From here it is known that the perfect man is the manifestation of the all-inclusive name and the mirror of tajalli of the greatest name, and to this matter these are many references in the Qur'an and Sunnah. God exalted has said, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا And he taught Adam the names, all of them, Surah 2 verse 31. This divine instruction took place in respect to the inmost being of Adam through his hidden, all-inclusive fashioning with the hands of beauty and majesty, Jamal wa Jalal, at the plane of Wahidiya. Similarly, the fashioning of his form and appearance in the visible world, Alam, a shahada, took place through the manifestation of the hands of majesty and beauty in the mirror of physical nature, Dabiyat. And God the Exalted has said, we offer the trust of the heavens and the earth, Surah 33, verse 72. And the trust amana in the creed of the Gnostics is the absolute wilaya, of which no being except man is worthy. This absolute wilaya is the same as the station of sacred effusion to which reference is made in the noble scripture in his statement. كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه. Everything is fated to perish except his face. Surah 28, verse 88. And in a tradition of the noble Al Kafi, Imam Muhammad Baqir al Salam is cited as having said, نحن وجه الله. We are the face of God. And it is mentioned in the Dua Al Nudba. عين وجه الله الذي إليه يتوجه العولياء. Where is the face of God towards which the friends of God turn? عين السبب المتصل بي. Where is the link that connects the earth's people with the heaven? And in the Ziyarat al Jami'ah, they are referred to as the Wal Mathlul Ala, the highest similitude or metaphor. The similitude and the attribute of being the face is the same as the image Surah mentioned in this noble Quran. In Allah Khalaq Adam ala suratihi. Indeed, God created Adam in his image. That is, Adam al Hassalam is the highest similitude, Al Mathal al Allah of God, his greatest sign and the most complete manifestation and mirror of the tajalliyat of the names and the attributes, the face of God, wajhallah, the eye of God, ayn Allah, the hand of God, yad Allah, and the side or proximity of God, jamballa. 
Arabic text, English translation. He hears, sees, and holds by God, and God sees, hears, and holds by Him. This wajh Allah is the same light mentioned in the noble verse. Allah nuru samawati wal ardh. Surah 24, verse 35. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. And Imam al Baqir alayhi salam said to Abu Khalid Kabuli in a tradition of the noble Kafi, Hum ayyuwa immata wallahi nuru Allah alladhi anzala wa huwa wallahu nuru Allah fi samawati wal ardh. They, the Imams, are by God the light that He has set down. Surah 64, verse 8. Surah 61, verse 8, Surah 39, verse 69, and they by God are the light of God in the heavens and the earth, Surah 24, verse 36. And the noble Kafi narrates a tradition of Imam al-Baqir, may my soul be sacrificed for the dust of his feet, that while expounding the noble verse, Amma yatasa'alun an naba al-azim, of what do they question of the great tidings, Surah 78, verse 1 and 2. He said Arabic text, and refers to the commander of the faithful Ali alayhi salam and the commander of the faithful used to say there isn't a greater sign of God than me and there isn't a greater tiding of God than me hence the perfect man one of whose instances is Adam alayhi salam the father of men is the greatest sign manifestation name and attribute of the real and he is the metaphor and sign of God the exalted God the blessed and the exalted is above having a like mythal and appear but one should not negate the existence of a metaphor for his sacred essence as walahul maslu wal ala and to him belongs the highest metaphor mathal all the particles of the realm of being are the signs and mirrors of the revelations tajalliyat, of the beauty of the beautiful one, almighty and exalted, though each one of them is such only to the extent of its existential capacity, but none of them is the sign of the greatest all-inclusive name, that is Allah except the all-inclusive being, Kona Jami'ah, and the sacred station of the greatest med mediation, Maqam al-Muqaddas, al Zakhiyat al kubra glorious is his greatness with the greatness of his maker arabic text english translation and god the exalted created the perfect man and the first man in his all-inclusive image and he made him the mirror of his names and attributes the great sheikh muhya din al ibn arabi has said hence all that which was in the divine form of the names was manifested in this human existence and so it acquired the station of all inclusiveness al ahata wal jam with this existence and with it was established god's argument against the angel from this discussion is known the reason for God's choosing and electing the all-inclusive human form from among the various forms for half other entities and the secret of God's giving precedence to Adam alayhi salam over the angels and his giving him a dignity over all other existence and his attributing his spirit to himself in the noble verse when afahtu fihi min ruhi and I breathed into him that is Adam alayhi salam of my spirit surah 15 verse 29 Surah 38, verse 72. As our intent in these pages is observance of brevity, we shall refrain from explaining the reality of the divine breath and its character in Adam alayhi salam and his singling him out for it from among all the existence. And all praise belongs to God firstly and lastly. Walhamdulillahi awwalan wa akhra. Sadaqallahul Azim. End of 38th hadith. The meaning of God's creation of Adam alayhi salam in his image.